Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Armadale Regional Council meeting of the 23rd of September. As interim administrator of the Armadale Region, I declare that I will undertake the duties of the office of interim administrator in the best interest of our community and faithfully and impartially carry out the powers, functions, authorities and discretions vested in me to the best of my skill and judgment. We recognise the traditional custodians of this land and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. The Armadale Regional Community uh, pays tribute to their love of land, love of people and love of culture. General Manager. Thanks Mr. Interim Administrator. Uh, the meeting is being audio and video recorded and recordings will be made available on the internet. No other persons are permitted to record the meeting unless specifically authorised by Council to do so. And we also ask that those present please be sure your mobile phones are turned up. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, item number three, apologies. There is no apologies. Item four, disclosure of interest. Uh, I have one disclosure of interest uh, from the interim administrator. It relates to item number 10.7. Uh, which is the airport business park and the, the reason, and it is a non pecuniary, non significant conflict. By virtue of my appointment as interim administrator, I am a member of the New England Weeds Authority. I have had no involvement in the negotiations. It's from the interim administrator. Thank you. No other ones? Um, public forum. Uh, confirmation of minutes uh, of the ordinary meeting of council held on the 19th of August. Uh, I would move that the uh, minutes uh, be received and declare that carried. Well, minutes, oh, sorry, the minutes be adopted and declare that uh, carried. Um, interim administrator minutes. Um, I have three. Uh, and by necessity, one of them is, is quite long. Um, people haven't got to write like crazy because there's copies here, but there's no press here in, in any event. First one is Interim Administrator Minute, Community Update. <coughs> For the Council record, I can advise the Minister for Local Government, the Hon. Shelley Hancock MP, acceded to my request for a three month extension of the suspension of councillors until 11 December 2020. The additional, the additional suspension was officially gazetted on 4 September 2020. Mr John Rayner, PSM, took up duties as Acting General Manager on 24 August, and I again thank Gordon Beaches for sending in uh, David Kerr, who made a substantial contribution during his short stay. The recruitment of a new General Manager commenced on uh, 28 August and was to close on Monday. However, this has now been extended until 5 October. In consultation with the recruitment advisor, two participants from the resident meeting convened to assist in defining the qualities of the new general manager will be selected to assist Mr. Rayner and myself in the uh, selection process. In accordance with the statutory obligations, I was required to submit a report to the Minister for Local Government no less than 14 days before the end of the initial period of suspension of councillors. I advise the Minister that in my view, the community has lost trust in their elected representatives and staff are confused and demoralised by lack of leadership and direction and political infighting. Put simply, Armadale Regional Council is dysfunctional and in disarray and an embarrassment to and a poor example of good local government. There is much to be done to restore the community confidence in, in the council. Since my appointment, all, kept, all suspended councillors have been interviewed, as was a former councillor, um, Ms. Steve Ray, who resigned prior to suspension, together with the former CEO and directors. I have met with local and state uh, members, most adjoining councils and many individual residents and organisations. 
The University of New England is an integral player in the area and accordingly I met with the Vice Chancellor. Current and former staff have contacted me and meetings have been held both in and out of normal business hours. As a result of the above, I had the opportunity of hearing wide-ranging and varied opinions on what led to the suspension of the Council. However, there is a consistent theme that deep divisions existed and that the Council was not providing a proper and safe place of work for its staff. The Local Government Act 1993 requires that my report include any recommendations in relation to improving or restoring the proper and effective functioning of the Council. Accordingly, I advise that I have made two recommendations for the Minister's consideration. And recommendation number one, a public inquiry under section 438U of the Act into Armadale Regional Council be held, and two, review the council law structure following community consultation. My initial observations that I have outlined in earlier minutes have also been informed by Mr. Kerr and Rayner, and it is clear that significant work needs to be done to restore the proper and effective functioning, governance and financing of council before there is any chance of improving same. The council has failed the community. It was meant to serve in the exercise of its function, provision of core services, decision making, community participation, financial management and integrated planning and reporting as best example as uh, as best example as follows. The deterioration in the performance and functioning of the council is evidenced through the English report, in which underlying issues were explored in May, in, in mid 2019 by Glenn Inglis, and in Graham Sanderson's March 2020 advice to the Mayor and Chief Executive Officer, and I quote. Armadale Regional Council needs to refocus on providing the effective local governance its citizens have a right to expect." End quote. New item. It appears to be the position of the suspended councillors that the result of a widely reported court case brought the dysfunction to an end. This, this view clearly understates the unfortunate culture that had developed amongst councillors, which is highlighted by the subsequent resignations, in particular of the Mayor and Deputy Mayor. In my view, the decision of staff and the delegation to commence the proceedings was a misuse of saying, and I've been unable to obtain a clear picture of what actually occurred, as I do not have the powers of the Commissioner. A public inquiry will allow a closer examination of this matter. That said, I believe the court case simply put, simply put, simply, it was simply a further example of how the toxic culture among councillors of the council was playing out. The resignations of four councillors puts at risk uh, representative democracy in the council area should the council be returned. There still remains no acknowledgement by some of the suspended councillors that their behaviour was not acceptable. New point. In my interviews with suspended councillors and staff, past and present, it is clear that there are relationship issues both in and outside of the chamber that require closer examination under oath. Some of what I have been told is very disturbing, but I am not in a position to breach the trust of confidentiality that has been placed in me by so many people who have assisted my forming the view in relation to a public inquiry. Such a decision will give residents the opportunity to come forward and potentially clear the air. New point. The financial position of the council needs closer examination and stabilisation. A forensic review, particularly in respect of cash reserves and expenditure since the 2016 merger, is being conducted and should be available for report to council at either its October or November meeting. The report will also clearly reconcile funds given to Council by the State at merger. I am advised that the estimated unrestricted cash as of 30 June 2020 is 2.14 million compared with 9.8.53 million at the time of the merger in May 2016. 
key point. An example of Council's poor financial position is the lack of funds for maintenance of its basic infrastructure in the 2021 budget. New point. The recruitment of a new general manager is critical to the restoration of Council's proper and effective functioning. In addition to working to address the significant reputational, legal and work and health and safety issues, there is a need to complete the process of the merger. Mr. Reiner and myself were both administrators in the 2016 mergers and we are aware of the complexities involved of governance, policy, financial, structural and community engagement uh, failures demand that a new general manager be provided with clear air before the return of the elected council and this will not be achieved in the short term. New point. Despite the considerable investment in, in council induction training, the roles and responsibilities of councillors and staff are clearly not understood and there appears to have been a complete disregard on the part of some councillors and staff of their statutory obligations. There are examples since I was appointed of a failure on the part of staff to declare interests and conflicts in matters before the council and the acting general manager is dealing with an issue involving a suspended councillor together with what is best described as operational conflicts. No doubt a public inquiry would provide the opportunity for residents to come forward. New point. It appears that some decisions of the council were not being made by meetings of the governing body and, and that the CEO and other staff did not have the delegation to proceed in many important matters. Briefings and workshops have been, have been de facto meetings which of course is totally unacceptable and unlawful. A review is presently underway of all presentations to such gatherings determine, to determine if my observation is correct and will be reported to the first available meeting. New point. The dysfunction and disarray has not helped with, has not helped with the completion of the merger of, the 2000, of 2016 and has been addressed above. Unfortunately, many residents of the former Dyer Shire do not understand the poor state of their former council's finances and are, um, and are using the suspension to further their desire for demerger together with a group from the eastern area of the council uh, who are lobbying to create a new LGA. New point. I question the maturity of the council, both political and operational, to be able to address important community decisions if the council is returned. These include water security and a drought management plan, which in my view should have been completed, completed under the former administration period, economic and tourism potential, such as the final decision on the New England Rail Trail and some outstanding development matters. There is also a need to finalise a special rate variation and untangle the complexity of the Council resolution to prepare the document Armadale 2040 as the priority over its statutory obligations of a local strategic planning statement and community strategic plan. A mechanism needs to be developed and embedded to recognise and use in a constructive way the talent of so many resident volunteers who want to work with Armadale Regional Council. Armadale Regional Council, in my view, has failed its community and needs a fresh start that focuses on the fundamentals of sound local government. This will ensure that Armadale Regional Council will be an effective and well-respected council into the future and take its rightful place as the lead council in the New England region. I will move the minute be noted and declare that carried. The second meeting, uh, minute deals with the reallocation of funds from the State Drought Stimulus Funding. As indicated elsewhere on this agenda, over recent weeks, I have spent many hours meeting with small communities across our local government area to gain an understanding of residents' needs and priorities. These priorities are small in the overall scheme of things, but very important to locals. 
I have reviewed the projects underway or planned under the state drought stimulus funding and discussed this matter with the member for the Northern Tablelands, uh, the Honourable Adam Marshall MP, and now propose to reallocate funds. My objective is to start to improve facilities in many of our villages and localities. These communities have suffered through drought and bushfires, and in the case of Middle Creek flooding, and deserve better attention from their council. The Acting General Manager has informed me that, the process that he proposes to suspend all work on the so-called business hub in Faulkner Street, Armadale, until he reconciles the sources of funding. It appears that the business hub was not formally decided by council and apparently includes a large allocation for moving council staff into these former library premises. If there is an accommodation problem with existing facilities, it should be the subject of report and consideration. In our view, it's a totally inappropriate use of state drought stimulus funding. The hub is also to provide a space for the university and business groups which is still under negotiation. It is proposed that $140,000 be reallocated as follows. Um, Wonga Binder, Concrete Apron, uh, Cut Concrete eight, Apron to RFS and Open Space Improvements in the vicinity of the hall, $18,000. Lego Park Gyra, Gyra Aboriginal Guyra Local Aboriginal Land Council for concept plans, community consultation and preliminary project studies to restore and reactivate Lego Park, $10,000. Ebor RFS drainage, $15,000. Armadale Playhouse improvements, $10,000. Point Lookout RFS, concrete apron, $18,000. Geolga, Get that one right? Chogla. Chogla. Um, RFS, concrete open, apron, $18,000. Um, Black Gully, funding to Visions for Armadale Creek Lands Incorporated for a pilot study on water pond reticulation, uh, proof of, of, of concept proposal, $40,000. I expect it on the business hub and staff provide an update to council on funding, expenditure to date, proposed usage and a business case to continue with the business hub. C, adopt the amended allocation of the draft of the state government, uh, the state drought stimulus funding as detailed in the minute. And D, receive a report on council's office accommodation needs and details of expenditure and source of funds on the council chambers, staff facilities since the 1st of January, 2020. I move, I uh, declare that carried. And the final one is Council's Drought Management Plan Consultation. Council's Drought Management Plan Consultation will commence in the coming weeks. Following last month's Council meeting, staff have developed a consultation plan that begins with identifying key stakeholders by the end of September. The process will include a survey and forum. Council is aiming to adopt a new drought management plan by the end of March 2021. I've had many representations to me on the significance of the drought management plan following out last year's low rainfall and runoff into the dams. While Council capably managed the emergency water conditions, it is clear the two plans for Gaira and Armadale were not fit for purpose. The community has made it clear that they want one updated drought management plan for the local government area and that work is now underway. <coughs> Many sound decisions on a drought management plan and other water management, I'm oh sorry, making sound decisions on a drought management plan and other water management issues means the council community needs to be informed. I've decided that in future, Council will publish on its website every week the storage level of its dams and water consumption patterns for both Gyra and Armadale. The information will include comparisons of levels and demand compared with previous years. And I thank the staff for their assistance in, in that regard. Um, 
I move that the minute be noted and declared that carried. I'm sorry about the length of the minutes by necessity though. Um, I promise when I come here I'll be clear, honest, open and transparent and that's what I'm endeavouring to continue to do. <coughs> um, there's no notices of motion and we now move on to item 9, uh, delegation of authority for the general manager. Oh, <laughs> um, Mr. Interim Administrator, <coughs> this report uh, recommends delegations uh, to me so that I can perform my role as acting general manager. Um, in relation uh, to this matter, I want to make a, a slight alteration to the recommendation uh, on the business paper. Uh, it doesn't really relate to your tenure as acting general manager. I just want to make sure that what has happened in the past can never happen in the future uh, for um, an incoming council. Accordingly, um, I would move that the officer's recommendation be adopted, subject to the instrument of delegation be amended to include authority to commence legal proceedings, does not include the authority to commence proceedings against the council or individual councillors. I declare that carried. Uh, next item is 10.1, uh, uh, expansion of the rail trail business case. Thank you, Mr Administrator. This report simply notes that the uh, review and report coming from the consultants will, will now be available to council week commencing the 5th of October. Um, as I asked the other day, the, it, the section from Glencoe to Glen Innes, that's been looked after by Glen Innes Council? Glen Innes Council are making a contribution, a financial contribution, but the consultants, Mike Halliburton, will do all of the work. Thank you. Thank um, you. Accordingly, in relation to 10.1 on page 5 of the business paper, I remove the officer's recommendation and declare that carried. Um, 10.2, uh, cash and investment report. Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. The cash and investments report for August 2020. Um, just identifies that Council was holding $71.5 million as at the 31st of August. Um, we are compliant with Council policy in relation to how those funds have been invested. Um, the only things to note within the report probably would be that we're tracking close to budget in terms of our year-to-date interest income, although slightly behind and with the decline in rates from the previous month, um, that trend is, is more than likely to continue. Uh, thank you very much. In relation to item 10.2 on page 6 of the business paper, I will move the officer's recommendation be adopted and declare that carried. <coughs> uh, 10.3, Guy Replace School and Long Day Centre Green Application. Thank you, Mr Administrator. Um, we would like to seek endorsement for a submission of an application into the new uh, grants funding uh, for New South Wales infrastructure to fit out the existing preschool, which that furniture can then also be moved to the new preschool. Uh, thanks. And you're Miss Campbell? Yes. We haven't met. I apologise I haven't been there. Nice to meet you. Uh, but you must be very happy with what the future has for uh, the Gyra uh, Preschool and Long Care Centre. Thank I think you. the whole Gyra community uh, should be very happy about it particularly if you've got young kids. Yes. <laughs> um, in relation to item 10.3 on page nine, uh, page 8 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation be adopted and declare that carried. Um, we're going to do 10.5 before we do 10.4 uh, for an obvious reason, um, uh, which, uh, which the CFO will tell us. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. Um, item 10.5 deals with the adoption of the draft financial statements for the year ended 30th of June 2020. 
Um, this is for the purpose of providing the set of draft financial statements to Council's external auditor. Following this, the audit will be conducted um, and the auditor after that uh, audit is completed will issue a report on the financial statements and conduct of the audit. Uh, draft financial statements included in the report contain a $6.056 million operating deficit position and a $2.113 million unrestricted cash position. We have since identified further required adjustments that have resulted in, a, resulted in an improved revised operating result of $5.268 million operating deficit and a $2.14 unrestricted cash position. As a result of these amendments, a revised set of financial statements is presented today for the purpose of signing and referral to audit. Um, I do recommend the adoption of the draft financial statements for the year ended 30 June 2020 as presented today, um, recognising that the overall results contained therein represent the culmination of 12 months of a significant amount of work um, by the organisation. The 1920 financial year has presented an unprecedented level of challenges that have impacted on Council's financial position, but it is of note in the draft financial statements that the cash position has not deteriorated um, from 30 June 2019. Thank you. Um, I think it's important that what you just said get incorporated into the minutes. So can we arrange that? Thank you. And your recommendation um, is, as was just highlighted, yes, thank you. So you're changing the recommendation, yes, thank you, to receive the statements as presented today. With those um, resu revised results. Thank you. Um, so the minutes will have the original officer's recommendation, the amended officer's recommendation. I move that the amended officer's recommendation, uh, as on the screen A, B, and C, uh, be adopted and declare that carried. Um, and we'll now go back to um, item 10.4, uh, which obviously has to be amended. Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. Um, yes, this report contains the proposed adjustments to the 2021 budget as a result of the incomplete projects at 30 June 2020. Um, as a result of the amendments outlined for item 10.5 that we've just discussed, um, this report has also been revised. Um, so I have proposed an amended recommendation just to reflect those changes. Um, including the proposed amendments, the 2021 carry forwards will reduce the capital expenditure budget um, for this financial year by $746,000 and 30. Um, and the capital revenue budget will decrease by $1.9 million. Um, the main reason that it's reflecting a decrease is that we have um, we have spent a little bit more money on the airport business park than we anticipated in the last financial year, um, but it is grant funded, so those funds have been recouped through the grant. Um, the operating expenditure budget will be increased by $385,837 and the operating revenue budget by $295,759, and those items are also grant funded. Um, the cash impact of the 2021 carry forwards as amended um, it has required $1,090,526 to be held as internally restricted cash at the 30th of June. Again, what you just said will be incorporated into the minutes. You've got to be incorporated into the minutes. Yes, thank yeah. you. And, and can I confirm that you have either contacted or you will contact in writing members of the audit committee? Yes, we will, thank you. Thank you. Accordingly, um, the same would apply the original recommendation plus the officer's amended recommendation. Um, I would move that the officer's recommendation, uh, as outlined uh, on the screen there, A, B, and the schedule, uh, be adopted and declare that carried. Um, financial support to community groups. 10.6. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. The report deals with um, following on from a council resolution that was made at a previous meeting in relation to financial support provided to community groups. 
Um, we've looked at um, groups that we provide annual support to within, um, within the budget process. Uh, they include Armidale Neighbourhood Centre, New England Regional Art Museum and New England Conservator Conservatorium of Music. Um, we have identified that these three groups already have uh, funding agreements in play. Um, so we are recommending through the report that the um, budgeted amounts that have been provided by way of support um, be paid to those groups on the basis of those agreements uh, being in place already. Um, there is some detail in the report in relation to the relevant elements out of those agreements that um, were in line with what the previous um, council recommend recommendation on this was. Um, I don't agree with this recommendation um, because it doesn't address the council decision um, of the 9th of August. Um, I repeat that I'm not proposing to take one cent from any of these community organisations, uh, but there must be openness and transparency when you're dealing with 5% of the total income, uh, of the total rate income of the council. Um, so accordingly, uh, I would move so that they might have liquidity problems, I recognise that, uh, but there must be an acknowledgement and we must have a, a system where ratepayers can see that they're getting value for their, for their money, even if, there, even if there are memorandums of understandings and agreements. Um, I would move that. Um, the council approved 50% payment of the 2021 contributions to the Underbell uh, Neighbourhood Centre, New England Regional Art Museum and New England Conservatory of Music. B, negotiate partnership agreements to accord with Council's resolution of 19 August with the groups outlined in one above prior to the balance of funds being allocated. C, the Acting General Manager delegates for authority to pay 50% of the 2021 contributions to community groups subject to uh, two above. Um, I'll move that and declare it carried. Um, I put C in, in case any of these groups have liquidity problems. Uh, that's not the intention. It's not the intention to take any money off anybody. It's just to make it transparent. Just to, because you got it last year, doesn't mean you should get it this year or next year. Uh, we need to make sure that uh, it's open and transparent for the whole community to see. Uh, next item is Stage Coach Lane in B Board 11.1. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Administrator. This is um, a recommendation from New South Wales Crown Lands that uh, um, uh, that the road is surveyed and declared stage, stage coach Lane a public road and that be reported in the Government Gazette. This has been a long outstanding matter as I understand and uh, I thank Crown Lands for giving us this advice and being able to resolve this issue. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in relation to item 11.1 on page 18 of the business paper, I move the officer's recommendation be adopted and declare that carried. Um, item 11.2, Izzy Yard Park. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. This is another Crown Lands matter. Crown Lands uh, wrote to Council recommending uh, that following our um, uh, bore testing there on Isiard Park, that Council acquire that land and it be used for uh, public uh, for water supply for, for the LGA. Thank you. In relation to item 11.2 on page 20 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation be adopted and declare that carried. Uh, item 11.3, Spring Hill Lane, Arda. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. Um, Crown Lands contacted Council and um, recommended that Council acquire that land. Uh, there was some con consultation about this. Um, we're not acquiring the full length of Spring Hill Lane as the, as the maps show and the description in the recommendation. There's a small section at the top that we won't be acquiring uh, and this will be retained for uh, public community benefit and um, and connection with other uh, parklands. 
And in relation to this matter, there's no obligation on behalf of Crown's lands to give us the land. They always said they could still sell it under their current proposal. Uh, they can do that. They, they advertised, it went out for public exhibition. Uh, we, we could be one of a number of people that uh, put up a proposal. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have had contact from Crown Lands who, are, who, are, who recommended that we look at this avenue. Mm -hmm. So we, we were actually contacted by them as well? Yep. Yeah. Look, I, I'm a huge supporter of publicly owned open space. Uh, together with the Acting General Manager, we've been down to have a look at this uh, and it should remain in public ownership. Uh, accordingly, in, I, in relation to item 11.3 on page 21 of the business paper, I will move the officer's recommendation to be adopted and declare that carried. Uh, 11.4, uh, the assessment and applications policy. Uh, Mr. Administrator, I'm speaking on behalf of our Manager of Development and Regulatory Services. Uh, he's put up a recommendation uh, that we endorse the public exhibition of the draft acceptance and assessment of, of applications from the 24th of September and they'd be presented with a further report after the exhibition period closes, including submissions for final adoption. Um, in relation to item 11.4, on page 22 of the business paper, uh, I would move the officer's recommendation and declare that carried. Uh, next item 11.5, uh, purchase of service infrastructure at Izzy and Park Wharf. Mr. Administrator, um, as this report says, there was a history, uh, <coughs> excuse me, to this bore at Isiard Park. It was developed at the time in collaboration with uh, the Costa Group. We are now moving to a permanent water access licence there. Uh, we have put in a submission to NRA, Natural Resource Access Regulator, that this be part of the, um, the utility system of of the LGA, therefore the recommendation is that all assets at this bore site come under the control of council and the, and the report uh, outlines the infrastructure and the cost associated with that. Um, in relation to this matter, um, I agree with the officer's recommendation, but this is a matter I've had many, many, many representations about uh, and the associated uh, mother of uh, Ducks Lagoon um, and when I read this report, um, it was the first knowledge I had uh, that the Costa Group uh, was mixed up in, in, in effect. So um, I want to change the recommendation, um, and it would read 11.5 that Council A negotiate to purchase all of the service infrastructure assets at the board at Izzy Park, Byra, owned by the Costa Group. B commission an independent report that addresses the following. One, the provision of water to the Costa Group during 1919-20. But two, the circumstances surrounding the request from Council for the Costa Group to fund the construction of public infrastructure at Izzyard Park. Three, details of any and all memorandums of understanding between Council and the Costa Group, including draft MAUs, meetings and negotiations. Four, the relationship between council, including councillors and staff, and the Costa Group. And C, consider the independent report at a future meeting of the council. I declare that carried. Um, 11.6, uh, policy for stock grids on council roads. Mr. Administrator, there's been a couple of attempts um, in the previous two shires, Gaurus Shire and um, Armadale Dumeric Shire, and I think probably even prior to that, um, to have a, a policy around the stock grids. They weren't harmonised. Uh, it has been the source of many disputes that have come before Council, uh, so I think there'd be significant benefit for Council to have one harmonised policy. Um, this report recognises that this will take quite a bit of consultation and I've asked Council for a bit more than the standard 28 days. I'm, I've asked them for an extended period. So, sometimes some of these groups are a little bit harder to reach out to and do um, effective consultations. So I've asked for, uh, I'll, I'll be doing this over an extended period, but I think there'll be significant benefits if we can get one harmonised policy. Uh, thank you very much. 
Um, as I discussed with you, uh, I'm going to need extra help with, with this one. Uh, so this, this is a difficult one for me. So I would like to know what the policy of the joining councils are as well. Uh, so I would move in relation to item 11.6 on page 27 of the business paper that the officer's recommendation be adopted subject to the consultation, including an assessment of the policies of the joining councils on the control and management of grids and would declare that carried. Um, item 11.7, uh, fixing of country bridges, grant application. Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. The Fixing Country Bridges program is a transport for New South Wales initiative that enables council to replace timber bridges in poor condition in order to improve accessibility for local and regional communities. The Omar region has a number of timber bridges which are nearing end of life. Since the publication of this report and upon further investigation, I would propose a change to the recommendation in which we seek funding to replace four instead of two bridges within our region to optimise our region's chances of securing a larger portion of the $500 million available throughout the state under this program. The additional bridges include the two stated as well as Laura Creek Bridge on Bordersley Road at an estimated cost of $501,907 and Lambs Valley Bridge on Lyndhurst Road for an estimated amount of $340,214. The total amount, um, uh, totaling a new estimated amount of $3,366,621,000. Thank you. So you're amending your recommendation? Yes, please. Thank you. So the same as previously, the recommendation, amended recommendation, um, I would move in relation to this item uh, that recommendation and including the two extra uh, bridges uh, be adopted and declare that carried. Uh, item 11.8 Regional Connectivity Program. Thank you. The purpose um, of this report is to acknowledge the Regional Connectivity Program which supports the delivery of telecommunications in regional, rural and remote areas. The investment in telecommunication infrastructure within regional areas has been, an essential, been essential for enabling participation within the digital economy and ensuring ongoing, ongoing regional digital connectivity. Uh, thank you. Um, in relation to item 11.8 on page 30 of the business paper, I would believe the officer's recommendation be adopted and declare it carried. And unless you want the exercise, there is no need to stand up then. <laughs> um, item 11.9 uh, on page 32, strengthening communications against natural disasters. Thank you. Similar to the previous report, the, the purpose of this one is also to acknowledge the temporary telecommunication infrastructure deployment program and to advise that we're unable to submit an application for funding as we don't have a, have a carrier licence and therefore do not meet the eligibility criteria. Uh, thank you. In relation to item 11.9 on page 32 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation be adopted and declare that carried. Uh, item 11.10, um, acquisition of land condition of development consent. Mr. Administrator, I'm speaking on behalf of Alan Langford, Revenue Officer. Um, the Council uh, would like to acquire lots 22 and 23 of DP 1168082 to deny access to Monroe Street from Grandview Crescent as a condition of the development consent and the land will be classified as operational once it's acquired. Mm. Um, I wouldn't normally agree to something like this, but it's a condition of development consent. So, um, in relation to item 11.10 on page 33 of the business paper, I'd move the officer's recommendation A, B and C and declare that carried. <coughs> um, item 11.11, uh, safety roads, black spot program. Thank you, Minister Interim Administrator. This report is to provide further um, information and update in relation to the final figures submitted 
under the safer road from the Fair Black Spot funding program. These figures have been updated after a detailed cost um, estimate analysis was undertaken on the nominated initiatives. Thank you. In relation to item 11.11 .11 on page 34 of the business paper, I would move the Office of Promises recommendation be adopted and declare that carried. Um, item 11.12. Uh, Armadale Regional Airport Lighting. Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. The purpose of this report is to consider the recommendation from the Tender Evaluation Panel in order to engage Alan Neal, Propriety Limited, in relation to the supply and installation of flood lighting for the Armadale Regional Airport apron. Thank you. In relation to Item 11.12 on page 37 uh, of the business paper. Uh, I would move that the officer's recommendation be adopted and declare that carried. Uh, item 12.1, which is the I dealt with the closed council matter first, is that that's going to be in 11. Okay, thank you. 12.1, um, uh, Guyra Free School Long Day Care Centre and Guyra Bush User Fee Amendment. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. We are seeking an endorsement for public exhibition uh, for our uh, attendance fees for it to have a small increase as they do annually every year. So um, a public exhibition period and a further report addressing any matters raised through that public exhibition period. Thank you. No, thank you. In relation to item 4.1 on page 39 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendations A, B and C and declare that carried. Um, item um, 12.2, Streets as Shared Spaces Funding. Thank you. This is a report advising on the successful grant submission, which has secured $59,522 funding under the Streets as Shared, as Shared Spaces Initiative. This application was made in partnership between Council and the New Armadale and is focused on creating vibrant street shared spaces, in particular activating the CBB Mall Precinct in alignment with the council adopted more vibrancy plan. Um, Mr. Administrator, uh, can I declare a non-pecuniary interest? Uh, my wife is chair of the new Armadale. I've had no involvement in this grant application or its acquittal. Yeah, can you make sure you put it in writing and give it to the general manager? Um, in relation uh, to this item, um, I have a concern uh, that there's every, every possibility that the council, through grant funding, will be spending a substantial amount uh, in the mall, and I just want to make sure that everything marries together. Um, you know, I congratulate uh, the, uh, the organiser, the new Armadale. Uh, for getting this grant, um, but I think it's important uh, that it links in. Um, so I thank the staff for helping me draft this recommendation up. There'll be A, B, and a new C. Uh, that key representatives of streets as shared spaces funding project and central business district revitalisation projects liaise with each other to consolidate current and proposed Armadale Wall and CBD revitalisation activities to ensure the work aligns with the adopted wall vibrancy plan 2017-2021. And I declare that carried. And the item, Gyra Early Childhood Centre Development. Thank you, Mr. Administrator. The purpose of this report is to receive and note the community consultation we've undertaken uh, regarding the proposed new Gyra Early Learning Centre and endorse the proposed site plan for the Early Learning Centre building. You're busy, lady. I am. <laughs> um, in relation uh, to this matter, um, I would like to move at the C. Um, in the budget and in grant applications, there seems to be money everywhere uh, for this. 
Uh, I'd just like a, a report uh, to himself and the community about uh, where the sources of funding are and also uh, to satisfy myself that we're going to stick to a budget. Um, so uh, move A and B, the officer's recommendation, and have a C, request a report detailing the estimated cost of the entire project, sources of funding, and timetable following DA approval. I declare that carried. Um, the next item is uh, 12.4, the um, Federal Bushfire Recovery Funding. And again, this matter, uh, we've done a reallocation of funds which the Acting General Manager and myself consider were inappropriate uses of the federal taxpayers' money. Um, if I could just say I'd like this included uh, in the minutes, and I'll give it a bit of written out. Um, I've had discussions with a member for New England, the Honourable Barney Joyce MP, and his office in relation to the reallocation of funds. Um, in relation to Wollongby, the playground allocation of $100,000 in this report also includes open space improvements in the area such as seating and a potential barbecue. So the full amount is 100,000, but there may be more than just the play equipment. Uh, in relation to Big Hall, in addition to the improvements to the hall, uh, there is an opportunity for a poor uh, site in the showground, um, and this will depend on the availability of funding for the hall improvements. As I understand it, uh, the Progress Association of Ball has some substantial funds which they can also invest uh, in the hall. Um, and uh, in addition, 20,000 of this money has to go towards a community mower and a shed. So just having that recorded in the minutes, so there's a little bit of flexibility for the council officers in the negotiations um, with the, uh, the good folk at uh, the board. So accordingly, I would move in relation to item 12.4 on uh, page 49 of the business paper, uh, the officer's recommendation A, B and C, and declare that carried. Um, the 12.5, disaster emergency coordination. Um, thank, thank you, Mr. Administrator. Um, the point of this report is to, first of all, to appoint a deputy limo, uh, and that would be Sean Woolner, um, to note the briefing paper of the Disaster Emergency Coordination Group and note the establishment of an internal committee to review the plan and procedures. And the background of this was 2019, we were hit by uh, drought and fire, so. The resources of council were um, were stretched, responding to all those emergency plans. Our staff did step up, but um, in the debriefs, and it, it's pretty obvious that some of these plans need uh, updating. Okay. Um, thank you for this report. Um, okay, so I found it quite difficult to understand, um, but when people have explained to me, I now better understand it. Um, and I suppose it's best addressed by failings internally due to policies that haven't been updated um, is probably the best way I can put it. But I, I don't agree with the recommendation. Um, I think I would move that Council A, uh, the matter be referred to the Acting General Manager for appropriate action, uh, and B, as on the business paper. And I would declare that carried. I think this is an operational matter that's more or less best left in the hands of the Acting General Manager of the State. Uh, 10.6, uh, naming of Children's Park um, in Curtis Park. Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. The purpose of this report is to request that the naming of the new playground in Curtis Park be deferred 
as some concerns have been raised around the consultation and effectiveness in engaging with the Aboriginal community um, on this naming initiative. Mm. Uh, in relation to this matter, um, I've discussed with the council staff behind closed doors my views. If I could just, uh, in relation to item 12.6 on page 56 of the business paper, move that no further action be taken and declare that carried. Uh, item 16.1, Arts, Culture and Heritage Committee. Thank you. Um, the, this report is the minutes from the Council Committee, the Arts and Culture of Heritage, uh, which was held on the 20th of August this year. Uh, thank you. In relation to item 16.1 on page 58 of the business paper, I believe the officer's recommendation A and B and declare that carried. Uh, item 16.2, Regional Growth and Place Activation Peak Advisory Committee. Mr. Administrator, this is a request to endorse the minutes of the Regional Growth and Place Activation Peak Advisory Committee on the 7th of August. Thank you. Uh, in relation to item 16.2 on page 59 of the business paper, I will move the officer's recommendation to be adopted and declare that carried. <coughs> uh, item 16.3, minutes of the Traffic Advisory Committee. Mr. Administrator, this is a request to endorse the minutes of the Traffic Advisory Committee held on the 8th of September. Uh, 8th of September. Um, this is a, uh, basically a technical committee, uh, which I won't be interfering with. I have no expertise um, in traffic and, and policing matters. Um, in relation to item 16.2 on page 60 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation be adopted and declare that carried. Item 16.4 minutes to the Arnavale Regional Aboriginal Advisory Committee meeting. Thank you. The purpose of this report is to endorse the minutes of the Aboriginal Regional, uh, sorry, the Arnavale Regional Aboriginal Advisory Committee, which is a committee under uh, the council, and the meeting was held on the 26th of August. Thank you. In relation to item uh, 16.4 on page 61 of the business paper. I would move that the officer's recommendation be adopted and declare that carry. Uh, item 16.5, New England Weed Authority. The purpose of this report is to endorse the minutes on the 20th, of the 25th of August for the New England Weeds Authority um, committee meeting. Thank you. In relation to item 16.5 on page 62 of the business paper, I would move the officer's recommendation be adopted and declare that carry. Um, in accordance with my views on these matters, I will not be dealing uh, with tenders in closed council, I will be with, with them in open council. However, we will be keeping the attachments of tender assessments confidential. Um, in relation, so we get, now get a line of 19.1. Uh, thank you, Mr. Um, Administrator. I'm speaking on behalf of the Acting General Manager of the Airport, the Council uh, confirms MSS Security as the successful tender uh, for the Armadale Regional Airport Security Screening Services. Thank you. In relation to item 19.1, um, on page 3 uh, of the originally recommended closed session, uh, I would move that the officer's recommendation be adopted um, and Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I would declare that carried. Mm -hmm. uh, we now move to uh, late items uh, on the uh, this late items which were public notices which were given last night, which that doesn't really accord uh, with the local government uh, meetings regulation. So I would move that pursuant to clause 9.3 of the Code of Meeting Practice. Um, items 9.1, renewal of the Council's Legal Services Panel, 10.2, Airport Business Park, and item 10.8, first right of refusal to purchase two stroke 182 Rusland Street, Armadale, be considered at this meeting, and I rule to be a greater urgency, noting the public notice of saying was given on the 23rd of 
September. I've moved that and declare it carried. Um, the first item then uh, relates to uh, renewal of the Council's Legal Services Panel. Thank you, Mr. Interim Administrator. The purposes of this report is to note the intentions to call for an expression of, in, uh, expression of interest, to establish a panel of suppliers of legal services, in particular in areas of planning, environment, and local government law, property law, employment law, and other areas of law. Uh, thank you. Uh, in relation to item 9.2 on um, page 3 of the supplementary agenda, I would move that the officer's recommendation be adopted and declare that carried. Uh, item 10.7, Airport Business Park. Uh, thank you, Mr. Administrator. I would note that I've declared an interest, uh, non pecuniary uh, non significant, thank sorry. Thank you. Uh, the recommendation is that Council does accept the offer uh, conveyed to us by First National Real Estate. Uh, the offer is on behalf of the New England Weeds Authority. It was for lot, it is for lot 19 at the Armadale Airside Business Park and the offer is shown in the attachments and i have make uh, the point that we, um, we did get an urgent valuation of the property and as the report shows uh, that value aligns with the offer. Um, in relation to item 10.7 on five, page 5 of the supplementary uh, papers, I would move that the officer's recommendation be adopted and declare that carried. Um, item 10.8, lot 2, 182 Ruston Street, Armadale. Uh, thank you, Mr. Administrator. Um, uh, previously, Council had been um, had first the right of refusal to purchase lot 2, 182 Ruston Street, and that came uh, from a deed uh, covering that property. Uh, an offer uh, was made known to us. Uh, council staff um, organised a evaluation. After considering that valuation, considering the potential uses of that, uh, that building, uh, that part of the building, uh, the recommendation is that we do not take up that first right of refusal. Uh, thank you. In relation to item 10.8 on page 6 of the supplementary uh, business paper, uh, I would move uh, that the officer's recommendation be adopted and declare that carried. I think that concludes the business. Mr. Jackson, General Manager, is that right? Oh, declare the meeting closed. Thank you, everyone. Well done.